So welcome back. So we're going to do part two of what size battery do we need for our solar array. And we're doing the dreaded wash. Um, unfortunately, washing clothes, drying clothes, it's not exciting, but if you're going to try and run something off of a solar array and a battery, then washing machine is kind of a bit of a battery killer. Um, it's just hard. So I'm going to show you what my batteries look like right now. Um, they're already down and it's quarter to 11. The sun's not out. So, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty grim outside. Um, so yeah, we're going to show you what the batteries look like now. Then we're going to show you what it looks like when we put the washing machine on. And then um, I'm going to put a wash on, but I'm going to run it off my separate system, which is my 48 volt system. So yeah, my washing machine is nothing special. Uh, it's not a um, super high efficient um, washing machine, paid 50 quid for it, second hand. Um, it's an intercept, but what it does have is um, quite a few 30 zones. And it's also got this awesome little button here, which um, if you hold it down, it does um, a 30 degree wash for um, 45 minutes, um, which is perfect for a small load. Wouldn't be much good for a, a big load or a big family, but for a small load, it's fine. So we're going to do 45 minutes at 30 degree, and then we're going to put it on an extra spin and um, get extra water out of it. And we're going to see what it does to the house batteries. So just running the washing machine, immediately 2000 watts coming out of the house batteries, and it takes it down to a critical level of 24.66 volts. We're only getting a couple of hundred watts coming in from the solar. So that means the batteries are going to be dead by the time the load finishes and there won't be any reserve to power the house. So I came up with a separate plan uh, to combat this problem. So yeah, you can see just by switching on the washing machine, even though it's only a 30 degree wash, it immediately took the batteries down um, from 25.7 volts but down to 24.6. Um, I'm having to put a little bit of power back in the batteries now. Um, by running them through the uh, Bluetti, which um, I'm putting an extra, I don't know if you can see that, an extra 400, um, 400 watts back into back into the batteries um, just to keep them going. So that's going to bring me to my next point: um, is how how do I run a washing machine? At the time of driving, my house was such a small battery, um, and that brings me onto the 48 volt um, Adekawa um, Renogy um, battery that I've got. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch that on, um, we're going to do a wash, and we're going to see what impact it has on the Renogy battery. So, the Renogy battery is uh, 2400 watt hours at 48 volts. Um, it does run the washing machine quite well. Um, so when you add this to the house batteries already, you've got 5,000 kilowatts, 2,400 kilowatts. And um, if you were to add in the extra charge from the Bluetti as well, which is around about 2,000 kilowatts, you're looking at a minimum house battery of 10,000 kilowatt hours. That is a minimum in the UK. So, um, you know, you can see that just by running basic loads in the house with very little solar. You know, if you're attempting to be off grid with a house battery that's only 5,000 kilowatts, how quickly that can be eaten up, even with the basic load in the house, and you're not even incorporating washing machines, tumble dryers, you know, air fryers, electric ovens, um, things like that. So, if I was to build the system again, and I was going to build it from scratch rather than the DIY system that I did where it was all made of individual components when I had the money to do them. Um, I would start with the battery and I would start with um, a minimum 10 kilowatt hours. Um, I think in the UK, really, um, you would want to double that to get you through those winter months. So I think you're looking at uh, a 20 kilowatt hour battery. And there's some good options available now. There's some cheap options, especially in the DIY market. And if you're prepared to actually make the, the battery yourself out of raw cells, it's even cheaper. So hopefully this helped a little bit. Um, I know my videos tend to be a little bit disjointed and the editing's not very good, but... Um, yeah, hopefully it helps someone in the future and um, it gives them a little bit of information to take to the solar engineers that come in and, you know, you can discuss options with them. So don't forget to subscribe and like, that would really help me out.